1874, two years before Colorado even became a state, the oldest school in Colorado Springs opened near downtown. Now today, the Colorado School for the Deaf and Blind celebrates a big birthday and at 145 years old, it has some amazing stories to tell. It was the vision of Jonathan Kennedy, whose three daughters were deaf. He moved from Kansas to Colorado Springs. He lobbied the local legislature who gave him $5,000 grant to build the school. General William J. Palmer himself donated 13 acres atop of Kiowa Street Hill, where the campus still stands today. The school opened in 1874 with seven students and three staff members. At the time, it was originally called the Colorado Institute for the Education of Mutes. That's what it had been called prior to that. You know, back then, you know, the name was fine, but now we've, of course, had to change that. Nine years later, in 1883, the first blind students were admitted to the school. And the name was changed to the Colorado Institute for Educating Deaf, Mutes, and the Blind. Superintendent Kennedy said he wanted blind children to have the same opportunities at the school as the students who were deaf. That year, three students who were blind enrolled. And in 1893, the school was officially named the Colorado School for the Deaf and Blind. A few years later, an interesting character moved in next door, Nikola Tesla, a Serbian-American who was a pioneer in electrical engineering. And he had thought Colorado was a really cool place to be because of the dry air, and it would really cause lightning. CSDB used to have a dairy farm in which the students could go to work. The electrical currents would cause the students and the staff members to feel the sparks and crackles under their feet every time they took a step. People also noted that the horses would rear back as they felt the electrical shocks going through their shoes. One of the first graduates of the school was one of the more famous, Paul Hubbard. Graduated from here, went to Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C., started playing football out there. Not only did he play football, but he played quarterback. During a football game, Paul looked around and noticed everyone was signing and it occurred to him that everybody on the other team could understand his method of communication. So he called all of his teammates in close so that the other team was unable to see what he was signing. And in that instance, he invented the football huddle. His picture and many others can be found in the school's two-room museum beneath the administration building. The most prized portrait is the one hanging upstairs, a painting of General Palmer. And General Palmer gifted that painting to the students. That original painting even survived the fire of 1950. The principal sent four students back into the burning building to save it. You look back on that, you know, hindsight there, who would send in four kids into a burning building? Uh, however, it happened. And again, because those paintings were so valuable, they were cherished paintings and they were saved. And like that painting and so many others, the school has stood the test of time. Pretty interesting stories, right? Well, check this out. The famous silent film actor Lon Chaney himself, he was the grandson of the school's founder, Jonathan Kennedy. He was known for such horror films as The Phantom of the Opera, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. He was called the Man of a Thousand Faces because he could transform into many roles through his facial expressions, a feature the deaf community credited to Cheney's ability to communicate through American Sign Language with his parents who are deaf. Taylor? 